so glad you're here with us this morning. Stand up and join us. Come on, just begin to open up your gates this morning. Open up your mouths. Begin to release your thanksgiving. Come on, begin to tell him how much you love him. Acknowledge his presence. Acknowledge the King of Kings. Lord of Lords. If you're at home, you, he's right there with you too. Come on, open up your gate this morning. Let your river flow. Let it join with others. So continue to pray. You pray before it happens because he is working on your behalf. He is protecting. He is dividing. He is conquering. And he is going forth before us. And he is protecting from what is to come. So keep praying. Keep believing because this God is a miracle working God. In the midst of what looks like mess and chaos, he is still on his throne. And he is still working on our behalf. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a
welcome in our hearts and in our lives. And Father, we do welcome you to move and to do whatever you please to do in our lives, Father. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you don't just live on us, but you live in us. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you live within us with a power that is almighty, a dunamis power, Father, that when we can speak to mountains, they are moved. Father, that when we can speak to death, there is life. That we can speak to death and there is death. We thank you when we speak life, there is life. And Lord, there is power in you. And we thank you that we walk in the almighty power and the anointing of you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, Father, that you are the Holy Spirit that lets us ears hear what you have to say. <laughs> Holy Spirit, you give us eyes to see what you want us to see. Holy Spirit, you give us a mind with the wisdom and the thoughts of you. And we thank you for that, Holy Spirit. You are gracious and you are kind. Lord, you are convicting and you are directing, Father. We thank you. Thank you that you are an all-consuming fire. An all-consuming fire, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that the fire of the living God lives within us and above us and upon us and around us, Father. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We worship you. We do not take you for granted, Lord. We embrace you today. We love you today. We bow our hearts and our lives before you. Thank you, Jesus. Stir up, stir up the living waters. Father, those that are weak, let them be strong. Father, those that are falling, raise them up. Those that are sick, I pray you would make them whole. Father, those whose minds are demented, I pray, Lord, that you bring clarity and wisdom to our minds. Holy Spirit, that you go before us where there's nothing you provide and you are the great provider. We love you today, Holy Spirit. Not just for what you do, but for who you are. <laughs> for who you are. And we love you. You're a good, good God, a good, good Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are a great and mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Great is your faithfulness. And Father, we stand here today. And as we pray for one another in this place and for ourselves, those online, Father, we continue to bring before you Israel. Father, we bring and we pray, God, that your hand would continue in that nation, that you would continue to work, Father, that your prophecies and your words are coming to pass and that you will fulfill everything that you have declared and desired for that nation. And Father, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We thank you, Lord, that you are faithful. <laughs> Lord, we will see the great and mighty hand, Lord, of you, Holy Spirit, as you go and intervene on the people's behalf. We thank you for that. Father, those that are in mourning, I pray that you would send Holy Spirit to comfort and encourage those that have lost, Lord, that you would provide. We pray for the Christians in that nation, that they would stand up and rise up, Father, and this would be a time of harvest, harvest in Israel, that you would come and you would do great and mighty things amongst your chosen generation. Thank you, Lord, the royal priesthood that we have all been called to, Father. We love you today and we thank you. Thank you for every person in this place, those who are watching online. I pray, Lord, today we would have the ears of the, the Spirit of God to hear what you have to say to us, that we will have eyes to see in the Spirit, and that, Father, we would walk in your ways today, and we thank you. We commit this place to you today. Do and have your way, we pray. In Jesus' precious name, we come before you and pray. Amen and amen. Amen. God's good, isn't he? Yes. Praise the Lord. He's a good God. You may be seated this morning. Thank you for being with us. And we thank you for taking time and coming and fellowshipping in the house of the Lord. Amen. There's nothing like being in the house and the corporate anointing, is there? I mean, we go, I was thinking this morning about being in my closet and, or being at home. I don't have to go in my closet because I have the house to myself a lot. So I, that is my whole closet, right, where God can come and meet with me. And I'm just so grateful that when he meets with me, it's very personal. But when we come into a corporate gathering like this, it is, it is a corporate anointing that does things that can happen, you know, sometimes when you're alone. Amen. Because each one of you carry the anointing 
of the Holy Ghost, and it meets and moves and ministers to one another. So thank you for being with us here today. In Psalms 5 and verse 12 this morning, it says, For surely, the, O Lord, you, have, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. Isn't that a good word? That he surrounds us with a shield of favor in our lives. I don't know about you, but sometimes I need the favor of God. Amen? Someone asked me to pray for them the other day. I said, I'm going to pray for the favor of God and man in your life. Amen? Who knows that God can turn the hearts of men to favor you because God favors you. Amen? So he's a good God. And when he favors you, he wraps around us and covers us under the canopy of kindness, joy, peace, so that we can walk in the Holy Ghost. Amen? Holy Spirit is so sweet. He's the one who convicts us and covers us. And he's the one who protects us and pre uh, preserves us. Amen? As we go forward in life. And he's a divine protector. He gives us favor with people, with God, and he covers us and protects us with his divine favor. And I know there's been times in my life when I go forward and I'm like, this is never going to be, it's never going to happen. And yet the favor of God shows up. Amen. And he just makes a crooked path straight. He comes before you and he goes behind you. And he's a father that cares about you and where you're at, and what you're doing in life. Amen. So let's just open up with arms to walk in righteousness, which God has given us. He's given us a cloak of righteousness. So therefore, our portion of favor is great. Amen. So let's walk and ask God to let us have his favor on us as we walk forward as a shield and a protector in our lives. Amen? He's good. I'm sure many of you can testify to the favor of God in your life. Well, welcome everybody here this morning. We're glad you're with us and you fellowshipping here with us. And thank you for um, being online and watching us. We welcome you too. If you're a first-time guest, welcome. Glad you're here with us. There's a perforated piece of paper right here that you can fill out. We just want to send a letter to you. Thank you for being with us. And um, we have a gift for you this morning if you are here as a first-time guest and welcome. If you're online, just go to the web. And hit get connected, and we will know that you are here with us. You can also put prayer requests on there. You can write your prayer requests on here, and we lay hands on these and pray over every one of them. So make sure you do that if you have a prayer uh, request. Amen. And if you have any updated info, put it on here too, because we need to be able to keep in touch with you. Amen. Well, uh, I have a quick, uh, some quick announcements this morning I wanted to share with you. This Wednesday night, we're having um, MIT is going to be here. Our ministers in training are going to be sharing with us. And uh, this week coming up is Jacob. Jacob is going to be with us, and we're excited about that. Um, if you can come join us at 7, that would be great. There is child care provided for 10 and under. Somebody asked me the other day, what is MIT? What's a, what's a ministry minister in training? I'm like, it's something Jack does. He's training some young men to be in the ministry, to get up and grow in God. And this is a great place for them to come and share with us. So come join us. Give them the support you need, and we would love to have you. All right, then we have a 50s plus life group get together. That's next Saturday on the 28th. 8th, and it's going to be at the Bertram's home, and it, they're meeting at 2 o'clock. So um, they said, you don't need to bring any food. If you just want to bring seven bucks ahead, they'll make sure that you get fed and everything is provided for you. So please let them know you're coming. The number is in here, or and they in church today, they, there we go, wait for us, and Dwight's at the back, let them know today you're coming so that you can um, they can put you down and um, have a head count for all the food. Also, um, the following Wednesday night, we are going to be continuing with a Bible study, November the 1st, and it is uh, Created to Dream by Rick Warren. It is excellent. Come and watch it. Come and join us. It's never too late. He recaps what he spoke on, and he would, uh, you will grow and you will learn something. So put that on your calendar. Also, continuing uh, donations for the Bibles that we're sending over to Hawaii, if you would like to donate, you can put it in the offering market Bibles or go onto line and connect and just hit Bibles, okay? And giving online is very easy, so we'd love for you to do it that way if you like. Also, um, 
I just want you to mark your calendars for this, but November 5th is uh, fall back in our time. So that's a tough one in November coming up. Actually, it's not. We get an extra hour of sleep, don't we? That's right. My husband reminded me of that. And then um, also on the 15th, I know it's far out, but we are doing Deck the Halls. We want you to put that aside so you can come and help us transform this beautiful building. See Miss Susan nelson right there. If you have any trees you would maybe like to donate, we're looking for four, two trees, six, new ones, new trees. If you're interested in getting us a new tree, to donate though. Um, she's looking for two new trees, I think seven footers or nine footers or whatever you have. Chat to her, but we need a new tree or two, but we, they do this room and we are very excited. Um, also, last but not least, our sound ministry and our Let's give up a hand for Rainier and his team and Albert and all those that work back there. I don't know if you know this, but they put many hours into running everything and getting it. And Anna Lou does all these amazing slides. And then Scott updates our webpage with them. And it is amazing. We've got a great team. But we're looking for one or two new members to join that. So if you're interested in helping in that area of ministry, especially on the soundboard, please see um, Rainier or Albert, and um, they will be glad to train you and get you on there, all right? Well, um, if you want to hand out offering envelopes at this time, it would be great. We're going to do offering, and then also uh, the youth can be dismissed to go on upstairs, and we're going to let Pastor come up and do the offering. Thank you. All right, did y'all have a good week? Four of you. Well, before you leave this place here, you'll be glad you came. And uh, God is still moving by His Spirit. And uh, you know, Cheryl also was uh, praying there for Israel. Keep on praying for the uh, salvation of that nation, but also for the people all over the earth. I really still believe that God is drawing people in America, in Texas, in Austin to Himself. And we're going we're gonna to see, I believe, a great harvest being reaped in this hour, this season. But it's really time for the church to really dig in, prophesy, minister to the uh, heavenly realm, and declare that the people of this earth belong to God. Amen? Amen? The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, which includes the humans on the earth as well. God loves people. If this thing is, this is uh, probably about as bright as it gets, I'm guessing. About as bright as we can get it. I think I can see pretty good. Um, I don't have anything really think that, anything to add to what Cheryl was saying as far as announcements go. Um, it's been a great week here where Cheryl also is working for hours and hours getting the web page up and also our own personal web page for Frontline Ministries International. And for, finally, I'm going to start being able to do a blog uh, every day coming here really soon, probably, probably this week. Um, there's things that I've written down over the, the past um, 20, 30-some years of my life uh, about topics uh, in the Bible that revelations God would give me as I read the Bible every day, um, about nine chapters a day. And so I'm going to start loosing those, releasing those in a blog form Unless the Holy Spirit gives me something specific, different for the days that are coming up here. So be looking for that. And also a breakthrough took place as our, our book got totally finished this week. And the, the final edit got totally done. And the cover got totally done with my sit daughter Sarah's help. Sarah's birthday is today. And she turned 31 years old. Had a little baby a few uh, weeks ago. And so uh, it's going to be going pretty soon now to get published. And so be praying for that. And then also we're going off to Thailand next Sunday after church. I'll be in church Sunday, but we leave after church and start flying out towards Thailand for conferences there. Um, we have some birthdays happening that are very important this week also. Uh, watching online is Frances Kala. I'll call her up about a prophetic scripture God gave me for her. And then Sarah, my daughter, like I said, has a birthday today. And then uh, Kim Evans. If Kim's here, wave at me. Right here. Oh, here's Kim right here. God bless you. As I prayed about Kim, I received Psalms chapter 19, verse 7, and it says, The instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord, the decrees are trustworthy, making wise the simple. And so these are two things I, I see God giving to you this year coming up here is more revelation and more, God, more also instruction is to give you wisdom and strength to help others around you with what God gives you in surplus in your life. So write that down, first, um, Psalms chapter 13, 19, verse 7. And then Jack Adams is uh, sitting right over here. God bless Jack. Let's give him a hand. This is our precious elder. And 
pastor at large, and he helps out in so many great ways in the church, behind the scenes, and in front of the scenes also. As I prayed about you, I received uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 says, For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life that you inherited from your ancestors. And so as I read that, those words there, the Spirit of God was telling me that all those things of emptiness from your far past, God's filling them up and causing them to come into fruition uh, more and more in this year ahead. Amen. So praise God, whatever those things, sometimes you think what you sow, you reap, but God's saying, no, there's things that were sown in the past. You're not going to reap. You're going to reap beauty for ashes is what God is saying there in that word. And then we have um, Stacy Fowler. Stacy, wave at us if you're here. She's going to be out, so if she's watching online, uh, just, you can write down Colossians chapter 311, and I'll, I'll try to maybe phone you this week and talk more about that to give more time for our guest speaker also. And then Thomas Cook watches online every week. God bless Thomas Cook and his wife as well. Um, the book of Amos chapter 3 verse 7, it says, Indeed, the sovereign Lord never does anything until he reveals his plans to his servants, the prophets. And I read that as like the Spirit of God is telling me that don't be afraid about things happening around the earth today in negative realms. God's going to reveal everything to the prophets, to God, those who are hearing God's voice, that you won't find yourself ever caught unaware of what the enemy or the world is going to try to throw at us in this hour and in this season. Amen? So take confidence in that. And then is Fred Torres here? Fred Torres is out. I'll, I'll wait for him as well. I may see him on Wednesday. Get a um, uh, scripture to him as well, Romans chapter 12, verse 12 and 13. Did I miss any birthday folks having a birthday today or this week? Are your birthday's today? Oh, it's, it's Tuesday, so I'm writing him down. I'll be praying for Dwight here. I'm not sure why it's not in my book, but um, I'm sorry I missed him today. Anybody else I might have missed? Back here? Oh, what's his first name again? Oh, little Declan. Just write down Declan's name. All right. As far as anniversaries go, it's uh, Louis and Martha Carlo's anniversary um, this week. So you guys are sitting over here usually. Or they even in the, there they are back in the back row. They moved a little bit. Let's give them a hand. God bless um, the Carlos. This is now what number for you guys? 41? Praise God for that. You guys are doing great. This is our church bookkeeper and bookkeeper's husband. And we appreciate this couple so much here. They came all the way from Maine to come to church here at uh, Tree of Life Church. They heard about us on, online, I'm sure, but no, they got, actually have family here, and they're glad to be here. So God bless you as a great couple for God. Is Jose and Eloisa here today? Did you point at them? This is Eloisa right here. Well, pray, this is what number now for you guys for anniversary. Number 22. Let's give them a hand. God bless Jose and Eloisa. Now, these are the uh, Pastranos, so God bless you. Did I miss any anniversary people? Let's go ahead and have our ushers come to the front. Let's pray over these people having birthdays, and let's pray over the anniversary couples as well, that God would bless this year for them, and it be the best year they've had yet upon this earth. So, Father, we do thank and praise you, God, that you are faithful to us, that you, God, are bringing forth the, the fire, the revival inside of our hearts that you want to release in this hour, in this season. Father, you're taking and, and causing curtains, blockages and barriers to be broken, God, off many people's lives. I pray, God, blessings upon these birthday couples or birthday individuals, that you, God, take them and use them in great ways this year, that you unfold to them mysteries from heaven, that you give them divine revelations, that you, God, show them the plan you have for their lives. And we praise you, God, for them to have divine protection, divine provision, and, God, your favor be upon them to bear lasting fruit. We also bless, O oh God, the couples that are having anniversaries this week. We thank you, O oh God, for Louis, for Martha. Thank you, Lord, for Jose, for Eloisa, that you bless, O oh God, them as couples of God. Use them, Lord, for your glory, and have your way in them and through them to be an example of a godly marriage. We bless what is sown this day in this offering. May it be used, O oh God, for your glory. Let us remember, God, you've declared prophetically this to be a year that you declare inflation on provision. That you, God, shall provide all of our needs according to your riches in glory in Jesus' name. We praise you, God, that you rebuke the devourer for thy name's sake in our behalf. And we thank you, Lord, we have the power to get wealth and that debt is being broken off your people. Let this church, O oh God, thrive to be a blessing beyond the walls of this building. We just ask all these things in Jesus' wonderful and precious name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, ushers, you help us out here. 
Thank you so much for your faithfulness uh, to us as well. God bless all you newer folks that have come in here as uh, volunteers for greeters, for ushers, uh, intercessors as well. And we really encourage some of you guys to go ahead and step out of your comfort zone. Start joining us before church upstairs. We pray at um, 915 for the services. And it really does make a difference when people come together and pray. Amen. The Bible says that on the day of Pentecost, there was 120 of them that came together, persevered, and then it said, then suddenly then came a sound from heaven, shook the room, fire came down from heaven like tongues of fire, filled the place. They were baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, and God shook the house. And that's because these guys came together believing that God's going to pour out something great upon them. We need prayer. Amen. We have a great uh, prayer warrior here with, with us today named Glenn Hubbard. Pastor Glenn Hubbard comes from River in the Hills Church. He's been here before a couple of years ago. I've traveled with him overseas. We've gone together, I know, to, to Botswana and uh, I think other places as well overseas. I've been to his church a couple of times, several times. Got a tremendously uh, great church. They're hooked up a lot in, in, the, in the spiritual realm and the ministry realm with Mike Bickle of the House of Prayer Movement and Church and Ministry in Kansas City. And they do 24-hour, I think, live streaming of praise and worship. He's got tremendous revelation about worship and about praise, but also about prayer. Our worship leader named Greg led worship at his church years ago. And I went ahead and went over there and stole him from Greg, I mean from Glenn. He <laughs> graduated up, got promoted there. And so that was a blessing as well. His wife's name is Suzanne, and he's been at his church for a couple of decades as well. Let's go ahead and just give a great uh, uh, Tree of Life Church welcome to Glenn Hubbard, who's going to minister today. Yes. Wow. Praise God. I, um, I want to tell you something about your pastor. I'm very um, jealous, I guess, probably the right word. We got on a flight to Johannesburg. 17-hour flight? The guy never got up to go to the bathroom or anything. He just goes, he sleeps. I'm getting up across aisles. Everybody's like, what? I, mean, I went to the bathroom over and over. In fact, I, I have to go right No, uh, But he, I was like, how does he do it? And so we get off the plane, and he's like, all right. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. I couldn't sleep. And he's like, so that's amazing. My wife is actually sharing the word today in, uh, at River in the Hills, and the word on her heart is Jesus is praying for you. Right. So I'm like, come on, honey. Uh, yeah, so I'm excited about that. Um, I do have a couple of word of knowledge uh, during just a few minutes ago. Um, you just I have to obey, right? <laughs> and so if this is for you, some physical things, I've got to... The word, I, I write them down in this case I don't forget. Elbow pain or joint pain. Anyone with elbow pain or joint pain, you can just lift your hand right here, okay? I also have the sense, in a spiritual sense, some of you are dealing with elbow pain or joint pain related to how you fit in the body of Christ, the body here at Tree of Life. Where do I fit in? And so there's some joint pain. How does my ministry fit and jive with the rest of, of the church? So uh, I want to pray for you in just a moment. Also, I got the word gallbladder or bladder issues. That may be a little embarrassing. Hey, but I've got bladder, you know. <laughs> so uh, we'll pray for that. And then, um, and I'm not a doctor. I don't even know anything, but I, I just get some of these things. Blood thinner. And I don't know if you need it or if you don't need it and don't want it, but um, uh, does that make, if that doesn't, if that makes sense to anybody, blood thinner, an idea with the, the idea of blood, am I, if I'm off, it's okay. I, 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 do I see any hands? Any, somebody? Okay. Okay. Um, let's all stand up, if you would, real quick on that, and just lift your hand if one of those words is for you. You don't have to interview them. Just lift your hand, and somebody just kind of turn, and if you can, around them. If, if you feel comfortable, lay your hand on them. Uh, Father, I thank you for Jesus. You, When you came upon those who were sick, there was healing in your hands. Yes. And we thank you that your manifest presence is here. Yes. So I ask now for the healing power of your Holy Spirit yes. to make contact yes. with physical bodies. 
Anyone else right here that has anything in your, that helps you to put your hand on the place where it hurts or needs healing? Make contact to those elbows, to those joint pains. I ask for healing. Jesus, you sh surely you bore their sickness. You carried that pain. Pain, go to the cross where you belong. In Jesus' name. Gallbladder or bladder issues, I declare healing and wholeness. Yehovah Rapha, release your healing. Cause there to be any infection, any infections in the body. We curse you. We say go in Jesus' name. Blood issues with thickening or thinning or Holy Spirit, I'm glad you know you're the great physician, Jesus. <laughs> I declare healing and cleansing of blood. In the name of Jesus. And now, Lord, we come before your word and your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, receive it. If you felt better, come and tell someone and, uh, you know, you know, let them know about that. <clears throat> I, was, I love that I got here a little early because it's a l long drive. And I, was, I come in and I go, uh, is there a, a prayer meeting going on? And I loved it that Jack was up there with the intercessors able to be up there with that prayer meeting uh, rather than me just sit around and uh, I love the uh, practice the worship team practice but I'd rather be in the prayer room for the service and uh, but when I got in there and they began praying I had a word of the Lord wants to clear channels and it was this picture not of like channels on a radio but like in a, like the Panama Canal, that where there's channels where boats go, and the Lord was like, the Lord Himself in my little picture there was, was like running the caterpillar, uh, big uh, scooper, you know, scooping up sludge in our lives, uh, clearing channels, not because necessarily of sin, but just kind of like when Jesus washed the disciples' feet. There was like he, they, they had sandals and they had mud on their, their feet. He wants to clear that out today so that, that you can, the river of living water flowing out of you can flow with greater volume and greater intensity. So he, allow him to do that work today. I also had a word this week. I asked the Lord what what moved his heart about Tree of Life Church? And, you know, in Revelation 2, it says, Jesus walks among the candlesticks. Did you know he's walking among you, Tree, tree of Life? He's walking among you. And I just think, could you give me a glimpse of what moves your heart about them? immediately this one word came in my heart, faithful, faithful. And it was this, this big grin on his countenance. It moves him that you are faithful. Faithful believers are those who are full of faith. Okay? You, you, you when we tend to equate sometimes someone who's full of faith with being exuberant in worship and saying hallelujah, which that's great. But that's not the, what someone who's full of faith is the essential definition. Someone who's full of faith, someone who's faithful is full of faith. When you're full of faith, you're faithful to your spouse. You're faithful on your job. You're faithful in your ministry, you're faithful to your church, you're faithful in tithes and offerings because you need faith in order to be faithful. And the Lord is so moved that you are faithful. Amen. I also have a word. I am going to get to a word. Does everybody have the notes, by the way? Yes. If you don't have the notes, wave your hand because it'll help you. We won't cover it all. You can go study it later. Uh, but I had a word for uh, Pastor Mike and Cheryl. Um, I felt like, Lord, what's on your heart for them? And immediately this word came in my heart. You are worthy of double honor. 
you're worthy of double honor. And it's in 1 Timothy 5, 17 and 18. The elders are worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. And so it is, I believe you all are generals in the kingdom of God. When you go on these, really you're going on these battle campaigns like to Thailand next Sunday, you're, you're a general advancing the kingdom of God. And you, Tree of Life, are going with him, with the team, with your prayers and your support your generals in the kingdom. And now I know this church, I know you honor Pastor Cheryl and Mike. But the word I had was that the Lord wants to give you greater revelation of how he feels, greater revelation of how he honors you. Did you know God can honor people? Yes. It's in the Bible. Yes. It's like, really? 1 Samuel 2, verse 30, God says, those who honor me, I will honor. So I'm praying and believing the word for you is that you'll have greater revelation, regardless of what people say or don't say or appreciate or don't appreciate, that you will have encounter and revelation of how he honors you. Can we just pray for them right now? Can we just do that? I know this isn't whatever, I'm just flowing, going with it, Right? Could y'all stand up? Could y'all, I'm, we're doing exercise today. Y'all stand up. Let's all just put your hands out toward them. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you that John 17, Jesus, you prayed, Father, would you glorify me that I may glorify you? So, Lord, we pray for Pastor Mike and Cheryl that you would glorify them Honor them, esteem them, respect them for their work's sake. You will glorify them for the purpose of glorifying you more. I thank you now. I thank you for the, the unity and love in this church family for them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, I'm a visitor, so I can do stuff. You can go, well, that was weird, and, but it's okay, right? All right, well, last week, now I'm getting to your notes there. Last week, in pre-service prayer at River in the Hills, um, this phrase came in my spirit, fight or flight. Fight or flight. And, I, and I, within a few moments, I began to realize that the Lord was alerting me to something that is happening in the world today, and in particular, the body of Christ. It's a fight or flight is going on. It is uh, and the idea, 1 Timothy 3, verse 1 says, in the last days, perilous times will come. And the perilous times that we are living in are accelerating two different responses by God's people. Fight or flight. They're two vastly different responses. One is really good. The other is really destructive. But all believers are being confronted, given the times we're in, with one of those two responses. And I believe God wants to give grace today for us to respond by fighting the good fight of faith rather than fleeing from the battle that God's called us to fight. Are y'all with me? Everybody good? All right. Well, I believe that in the margin of the New King James Version, there in 1 Timothy 3.1, that phrase, perilous times, literally, it says in the margin, times of stress. Times of stress. Given the times of stress and increasing pressures, how many of you sense there's increasing pressures in our world, right? We, we're addressing it right through prayer. These times of increasing stress are causing five predominant negative emotions in people. And I use the acronym in your notes to help you remember. It's FOLD, F-O-L, 
D, and then I tacked another D on. Five negative responses. Fear, offense, lust, deception, and despair. Now, deception is not necessarily a, a, a negative emotion, but it is, uh, these are all five negative emotions, but, but in the pressures in the world we're living in right now, deception is really at an all-time high. How many of you don't trust all the media outlets, right? You're like, wait, what? Wait, no, Hamas bombed that hospital, right? Nobody's shouting me down, but... It got confirmed, amen? Yeah. We don't trust all that's going on. We, the fold is happening. Fear, offense, lust, deception, and despair are happening. God's people, given all this, we are either advancing or we are retreating. And it's not all, we're not all advancing. There are areas where we're advancing. It's not all retreating, but we're retreating, we're pulling back, we're drawing back in certain areas. And so we're all facing this. We're either running to the battle, like King David did toward Goliath, or we're running away from the battle, running into passivity, prayerlessness, we're not praying like we used to, running into compromise, you know, when King David, when it's 1 Samuel 17, when he's facing Goliath, he didn't just shuffle out to the battle with his five stones and his sling. He's like, okay, here I go. No, what does it say? He ran to the battle. That's the kind of anointing I want in my life. When pressures come, I don't fold my tent but I run to the battle. And I'm talking today about an anointing, not a personality type. In fact, I'm not really interested in how this comes out today, like it's, oh, that was a slick message. I really want the power on God's word to take place in you and in me. It's a two-edged sword. Lord, cut me with your word. Anoint me to where when, I, when, the, when the, 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 the challenge comes, I don't flee, but I run to it. There's no middle ground. You know, unless you've been in a cave, you're choosing one or the other right now. Fight or flight. And I get it. I see the news. I wouldn't, I'd encourage you not to watch too much news because that can diminish your faith and cause you to be dull. You know what I do as an intercessor? I watch just enough to inform my prayers so that I know so that I'm not beating the air, but I'm praying with accuracy. But then I turn it off because there's a lot of mocking, a lot of coarse jesting, and it can, it can defile our spirit. But that, that's an aside. Okay. <laughs> but I get it. God's calling us, though, to fight and not flee. I came back during worship last week. I wasn't preaching last Sunday. My son was, but I thought I'd look up on my phone. Uh, Google's a great way now to, to look real spiritual if you can get stuff right on the fly during worship. And, but I looked it up because I was coming off of worship, and I shared a little bit of this, that, that the, the actual, in the natural, there is a flight a fight or flight response. How many of you know that, right? So I looked it up and it was amazing because there are three things in the natural with the fight and flight response that um, I believe there's a spiritual parallel and that's what I want to talk about in these, in these few minutes I have left here. Um, definition of the fight or flight response it is an automatic, I think it's in your notes, automatic physiological reaction to an event that is perceived as stressful or frightening. In the body, hormones are released that prepare the body to fight or flee. 
This results in three things. And here are the three parallels I thought I saw from the word. Increased heart rate, increased blood pressure, and increased breathing rate. Those things actually happen that help you to run to the battle. Some examples of events, and I think I'll, as I read some of these, you'll probably re relate to some of them. Um, someone cuts you off on the highway. Anybody ever cut you off on the highway? All right. And you have to swerve and narrowly avoid a collision. Amen. He said, yes. Second, while you're out on a jog, a morning run or evening run, an angry dog jumps out onto your path and starts growling and barking at you. That actually happened to me when I was a new believer about a year or two in the Lord. I'm jogging along, dark. I have my headphones on, my Walkman, whatever it was. And I had this impression, the Holy Spirit said, be careful, be on the alert. I was like, huh. So the first time I realized as a Christian, God can, you know, he's a, he can actually speak to us like that. I'm like, so I'm jogging along, and then all of a sudden, going past, it was a city street, this big dog comes out from in front of a car, a parked car, and he goes, rah, rah, rah. And I, I was ready. And so, you know what I did? Honest truth. He comes, rah, rah, rah. I went, kura la ba 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 ki. And this big dog went, burr, and he ran the other way. <laughs> For real. I was like, this works. I, so I actually thought tongues does everything. You know, I was like, wow. But I fought instead of ran away in fear. Third one um, example. In, a, in the second before you turn on the lights in your empty house, you, your coat rack looks like a person standing right next to you. Okay. These things can trigger the fight or flight response. If you guys can get that, that video ready, in, on 9-11, New York Fire Department heroes ran toward the burning buildings rather than fleeing. Can you guys show this? They were there 20 years ago, the terror attack on New York City. I can't get it out of my head how, how fast 20 years has gone. These four men live in St. John's County now. But on 9-11, they were serving in the fire department of New York. Each responded from different firehouses, different jobs, different schedules, but each responded like a New York City firefighter. They immediately ran toward the disaster where eventually 343 firefighters would die. Oh, God bless all those guys that were lost. John Westfield was first of these four on scene, on duty and dispatched before United Flight 175 arrived and delivered another devastating blow to the Twin Towers. I watched those buildings go up as a kid, and I never in my wildest dreams thought I'd watch them go out in flatbed trucks. Eddie Zielman, Bob Apati, Jerry Durkin, they were all formerly off duty when the planes hit. They all raced to respond, and none could imagine how many in their brotherhood they would lose. Amen. Well, I want to, that, that stirs me, what they did. And I believe this is happening in the spirit realm. There's, there's burning buildings, and what are we going to do? Are we going to run toward them, the word of God, or are we going to run from them and hide, stick our head in the sand? Respond, I have two responses. I'll quickly go through these, because then I want to talk on the, the three things we can do. Response one, as I've already said, is, is fight. I'm not talking about road rage if someone cuts you off. I'm not talking about a physical fight. I'm talking about fighting in the spirit, fighting the good fight of faith. <clears throat> First uh, uh, Ephesians 6.10 says, we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Problem is, a lot of Christians, they just cut it off at the wrestle not. For we wrestle not. Right? And they're like, oh, God's sovereign. He'll take care of it all. No, there's a fight. There's a part of the fight where we, we are to wrestle. And in and, and, and Timothy, 1 Timothy 6.12, calls it a good fight of faith. Do you know there are fights that are good? This is a good fight. It's the fight of faith. And so we're not of the, the ilk that says we wrestle not. We're the... We're of those who say we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We don't fight with people. 
but we fight in prayer. We fight with, with love. God's battle strategy is, God has a battle strategy here. It is James 4, verse 7. You don't, please hear me, you don't directly go at the devil. You submit to God, then you have the anointing to resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Why? Submitting to God is humbling yourself, and God gives grace, God gives power to the humble. So that's his battle strategy. Submit to God, then you have the anointing and the power. Response two is flight. It means you retreat. We don't want this. You, it means you turn your eyes away from all that's going on. Israel, the border crisis, lawlessness in our cities, transgenderism. You, 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 it means you, you fight, flight means I don't want to look at all that. It means you, you know what it basically means? Flight, fleeing in your spirit means you basically quit going for God with all your heart. And you escape into excessive entertainment. And I'm talking to me, exce excessive entertainment or social media or spiritual passivity or physical passivity. Uh, I think of Legally Blonde where she was sitting on her bed eating this whole thing of chocolates. I'm, I'm just talking to me, right? <laughs> she, she retreated and then she throws anyway. All right. Um, dullness, compromise, you stop. Here's what happens with me. We, we have a prayer room, our sanctuary through the day, so a lot of my time is, is in the prayer room. And here's what happens to me. I'm just going to act it out a little bit. That's all right. A lot of, I'm in there a good bit of the day, so I have pillows in front of a big screen with the International House of Prayer going. So I'll be lying down on my pillows, and I'll look up, and they'll start, you know, in worship, they'll start singing a scripture, and I'll start getting convicted. You know, my heart has drifted away. And you know what I do? It's strange, but I, I, I sign up again all the way. So if you were to walk in the prayer room, here's what you'd see. You'd see me signing my name in the air. Glenn G. Hubbard. But I really mean it. I, I'm signing back up. I'm choosing to fight, not wander and drift into dullness and compromise. Last few minutes here, I want to look at three things based on this Three parallels based on this physical response to fight or flight. Increased heart rate. That's in your nose. First, we need to, to go from flight to fight. Maybe there's an area where you're listening today, and you know what I have? I've been going. I've been drifting. There's grace today to go from flight to fight. Increase your heart rate, which means increase the rate in which your heart turns back to God when you feel yourself drifting. Increase the amount of times, like I illustrated, that you sign up for the Lord. The moment you feel yourself sliding into a complaint or an offense or a gossip or a temptation to sin, say, Lord, I repent, I turn, and I give you my heart again. I'm yours to take and break. Just make me sensitive to you. That's turning your heart back. How many of you know the song, and this is how I fight my battles, right? From flight to fight. Turn on worship. You know, when you feel that, that temptation, turn your heart back to the Lord. Amen. B, increase your blood pressure. Worship team, almost get ready, worship team. I'm about, about here. Increase your blood pressure. Well, here's what I say with that. Lord, Lord let the power of the blood 
press in to that area of my life where I need the power of the blood? Where do you need the power of the blood to be activated? Increase that, you know, there's pressure out there, but I pray in the spirit and I say, Lord, let the power of the blood press in to my life. Let the power of the blood, that it cleanses me. Let the power of the blood heal me. The reason we just prayed for people with elbow pain and other things, you get healed by the power of the blood. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. But you know what? We don't necessarily let the blood pressure needs to be. This is a good blood pressure, okay? We need to plead the blood more. 1 Corinthians 5, 7 says, Jesus is our Passover lamb. The original Passover in Egypt, the blood of the lamb was, the, the blood was Pour, was drained in a basin bowl, and the head of that Jewish home would take a branch and dip it in that bowl and apply the blood over the top and the sides of the doorpost. And so then evil, the enemy, would pass over that house because the blood got applied. You know what the branch is today? Jesus has shed his blood, correct? Correct. But the blood does not do you any good as long as it stays in the bowl. God's talking right now. <laughs> What's the branch that dips into the bowl and applies to the blood of your home, your marriage, your finances, your relationships, your ministry? What's the branch? My tongue. When I... Revelation 12, 11 says we, o- we overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our, what? Testimony. God's waiting for you to dip your branch in the bowl and apply it and declare it. I- I'll just say this and maybe you can hit it, get it in your head here. We overcome when we testify personally to what the Word of God says the blood does for us. Father, your Word says that the blood sanctifies me. Your Word says the blood justifies me. It forgives me just as if I'd never sinned. Your word brings healing. Your word brings peace. Your word brings provision. Your your word brings protection. Your word brings guidance. So wherever your need is, let your mouth, let your tongue testify personally. Worship team, you can come up. I want to read, actually I want us to declare there's a a really cool song out by Cody Carnes called Plead the Blood. And uh, it's my son actually found it and he started playing it, River in the Hills. But I want us to turn this into a confession, if you would. Uh, We're going to confess this. I'm going to say a line and this is about plead. It's called Plead the Blood. Okay. In fact, could you let's all just stand right now? We're 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 closing. We're as they say, landing. We're landing the plane. <laughs> um, plead the blood. Here here we go. Here's the lyrics to the song. Just say it out loud, boldly, because what you're about to do is take the branch, the tongue, and dip it and apply it. Y'all with me? Yes. Okay. Here we go. Here and now. I draw a boundary against every weapon that's formed. The thief and his plans will pass over when he sees the red on the door. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. The enemy can't take my family. I'm going to say that one again. The enemy can't take my family.
Let's say it a third time. The enemy can't take my family because this home belongs to the Lord. So I'm not afraid to remind him that he has no claim in this war. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood of Jesus. Let's clap to God right now. Let's clap. Thank you, God. I believe you mean it. And guess what? Guess what? Every Jewish home in Egypt got the death angel passed over, not because the father in that home was all bold applying the blood. He could have had a shaky hand like, I don't know. Or next door, the, the other father could have gone, I believe it didn't matter because the power wasn't in his faith. The power was in the blood. I'm preaching myself into actually believing this. And uh, amen. All right. Well, I want to lead us yeah, as you stay standing. Yes. Let's sing that right now. Blood can wash away. Can you sing that or are you just going for it? for fresh filling as we sing this. Let's pray for fresh filling. Right now you're increasing the breathing rate. Open your hands right now. Holy Spirit, fill me. I want to increase the blood pressure. That's how you get filled too, right now. Greg, you did it earlier. Just lead us in praying in the Spirit. If you pray in the Spirit, you're getting filled up. kept telling her she had physical conditions they kept saying it's because of stress it's because of stress and nothing got her better she tried to take medication this and that and then she was in a time of prayer desperate crying out to God and the Holy Spirit spoke to her and said stress is a spirit and 90% of my people are dogged spirit of stress. She got set free gloriously, got physically healed, and then the next week she testifies to the congregation saying, anyone who wants deliverance from a spirit of stress, come forward. Guess what? 90% of the congregation came forward. Exactly what the Holy Spirit told her about 90% of my people. It's not just you have difficult situations. There's a spirit involved. How many of you want to be set free from a spirit of stress? Amen? Holy Spirit, we thank you that by the blood, Colossians 2.15, you, Jesus on the cross, disarmed principalities and powers of darkness, we are possessed by the Holy Spirit. We're not possessed by this, but we are being uh, uh, tormented. Many in this room, right now, lift your hand right now. Say, I want to be free. If 
you're wanting to be free from a spirit of stress, in the name of Jesus, I say to a spirit of stress, I break your power. I break it, break it, break it. In Jesus' name. And instead of stress, I now receive peace. I receive holy bandwidth. there is uh, homework assignments up again and I really believe we're in, in a time and a season where God does want us to really uh, get into a place of being active Christians who really do take up the sword of the spirit you know the only offensive weapon God gives us is a sword of the spirit and really God wants us on the offense he wants us to start attacking and, and running at the enemy at the devil head on and knowing that Satan's already defeated so, Father, we just do uh, encourage ourselves in Isaiah 26, 3, that says you'll keep us in perfect peace, whose minds are stayed upon you because we trust in you. And Father, we just praise you, God, that lies are being broken off your people, that shows you smaller than you are, and that shows the devil bigger than he is. We pray for a flip-flop. We pray, God, for a turning, that we see you, God, as big as you are, and we see Satan for as small as he is. And we have courage, God, to come against him and attack him and meet him head on, knowing there's no armor for our back, but only for our front. We give praise and thanks, O oh God, that these things are going are to be taking root in our lives. Thank you, Father. The ushers are here. They can help us out again. If they would, please, we're going to receive a love offering for our brother. Hope you enjoyed um, this word that was shared here. But again, it's a word that's kind of ongoing as well. If you can, can come back next Sunday to... Uh, before I leave for overseas, I'll be speaking, um, unless the Holy Spirit changes my mind here, but I really um, want to speak on spiritual warfare uh, next Sunday. And it'll be a balanced message as well. And we'll be involved in, in praying as, and, and so forth and using what we learn, what we hear about spiritual warfare. Um, because God wants his people to understand who they are in him and that we really are a warring, battling people. Amen. I have no more fun in the week. I get my granddaughters, the little ones, um, in, in the room where my 70s stereo has been revived with these giant speakers that stand this tall. I could blast out the windows or the whole neighborhood if I wanted to. And I stick on warfare songs. And I stick on Dallas Home and people of that nature that sing warfare songs and let them start dancing. And they like to take and get in my handkerchief drawer and start throwing all the handkerchiefs in the air making them stick on the ceiling fan above the bed while well, they're bouncing on the bed and balancing on the end of the bed like a balance beam this is part of the fun part and so i want my uh, granddaughters and my grandkids to understand spiritual warfare and enjoy god enjoy god's presence you know david was just dance and just praise god the bible said the evil spirit would leave saul he didn't lay hands on him he didn't rebuke the devil he didn't rebuke the spirit he just started praising god worshiping god in the beauty of holiness, it says the evil spirit would leave Saul. And I told you guys before when I first began doing rock seminars, and I started getting sick to my stomach in my car because the demons would come inside my car to try to torment me and fight against me. But God said, next time that happens, put in a worship song. So I put in the Imperials old song called Praise the Lord. He can work through those who praise him. Praise the Lord for our God inhabits praise. I put that tape, cassette tape in there and blasted that. And that devil was gone in two seconds. And God's presence has filled that car up. And it never came back for 298 more presentations after that in four years. Amen. So I've learned that there's power in praise. There's power in worship. There's also power in declaration. 
But the main thing is you got to really just take and be obedient and fight the way that God wants you to fight. Sometimes you just got to be still and know that he's God. Thank you guys for being generous. If you make checks out again, uh, you always make them out to Tree of Life Church. When guests come here, we always add them all together. You that are watching online, there's also a place to go to online to give to guest speakers. And you can put uh, that in there as well. We'll make sure that uh, Glenn receives all of this. And we'll uh, keep in touch with you. And we're going to believe good things for River in the Hills Church. Amen. Let's all stand up one more time. Have our prayer partners come to the front. If you have anyone, any need in your body, your life, your finances, relationships, someone needs prayer, it's not here today. Uh, please take time to come to the front and get a prayer partner to agree with you in prayer. These are anointed people. They're prayer warriors. And there's been many, many answered prayers through them as well. We won't forget about this week being the week of uh, Dwight Bertram's birthday. <laughs> we're going to get we're going to pray about you as well. We're going to get a, a, a word from God for this man of God also. Amen. Let's go ahead and let uh, Greg dismiss us in prayer in a moment here. And if you want to talk to Glenn or have Glenn pray for you as well, Pastor Glenn here, you can uh, do that also. He'll be up here at the front. God bless you. We'll see you later here Wednesday night for Brother Jacob. And uh, good night here for the interns as well. So have a blessed week here. We'll see you folks real soon.